This is John Black, Super Chemist. I will be having more uh, experiments up. It's only a couple more weeks now before I get some time off work where I can do stuff. Uh, we're here to talk about phenylpropanolamine. Um, that's basically a active ingredient that they used to put into Sudafed, and people would use it to make amphetamines. You can see a picture right here. You take off the hydroxy group, that's amphetamine. Uh, so sometimes they call this beta hydroxyamphetamine because um, you have that hydroxy group on there. Now, if this had a methyl group on the amine, that would be the uh, analog, the methyl analog. That'd be um, ephedrine, and that's what an active ingredient in Sudafed also that they used to make methamphetamine with. You take off the hydroxy group and you'd be left with methamphetamine because you'd already have the methyl group on the amine. <coughs> and then pseudoephedrine would be the uh, optical isomer, meaning the mirror image of ephedrine. Um, but we're not going to get into, you know, uh, optical isomers and stuff like that. Um, so they don't put this in pills anymore. I mean, if they do, you probably need a prescription, and they really keep an eye on it or whatever. If you wanted to make this, though, um, here's the mechanism, or here's the equation. You'd need two benzaldehydes, and you would need one uh, amino acid called anilin. Now, you don't want the beta anilin. Beta anilin means the amine group is on the last carbon there. And we want alpha, which is regular. Um, and you'll know because it'll either be called beta anilin or it'll be called L anilin. L, meaning the L isomer of it. And uh, you can't really buy it in the stores anymore. You'd have to buy it online. And I'm sure they, you know, if you bought a little package, that'd be one thing. But if you start buying tons of it, I'm sure they'd look into you. Um, so, anyways, you get one and a two. Now this first part is easy. It's going to make an imine. I mean, that's, you know, you don't have to heat it. An imine is easy to make. You just mix a, a carbonyl group and a, an amine, and you'll have your imine. You don't have to heat it or wait. It's instantaneous. It's, you know, it's an easy reaction. Then, I'm not sure how, but somehow maybe through some kind of resonance or here or something, this becomes negative and I'm guessing this is positive. Well, obviously, this is positive. So this has to be negative. They hook up, right? And now I draw this, this, and this is the same thing. I just draw it a little different so that you can, you know, see how it forms into this. Um, but once that connects up, your carbonyl becomes a hydroxy group, right? Your double bond becomes, you know, your one bond comes drops down and becomes a single bond, the proton gets picked up, and you have benzoyl alcohol here attached to this. Okay, so everything is the same as over here. You just basically, that double bond came down and made a single bond here, and you put a proton on to make the hydroxy group. So this is the same as this, okay? Now after that, the amine pops off and become, I mean the uh, imine pops off and becomes an amine. Right? So now you're really getting close to, you know, your, your end product. This decarboxylates and comes off as CO2, right? And now you're left with this, your phenylpropanolamine hydrochloride, which is one of the, well, I don't have hydrochloride there, but that's one of the uh, active ingredients they used to put into Sudafed. And with this, you know, you get your, you know, let's say you have a, gram of this, you get a third of gram of phosphorus, two grams of iodine, mix them together with some water and heat it up, reflux it, and you will take that hydroxy group off. It's easy to take off because it's a benzyl hydroxy group. And you'd be left with amphetamine. Um, now how is that done exactly? Well, you're going to put them together and reflux them, right? Here's the equation, right? You need two benzaldehydes, just like I showed up there. One to make the imine, and then the other one comes in to add the 
benzyl alcohol, really benzaldehyde, but it turns into benzyl alcohol. Um, one of these, now the boiling point is 178C, okay? You're going to have CO2, remember at the end there, CO2 comes off. And you know when you open a can of pop and CO2 comes off, you got foaming, right? So you do not want to reflux this, right? That's for sure. Um, it boils at 178, so I would heat it to 150 C, okay? That way you're not boiling it, you know what I mean? If it foams, um, you can uh, handle it, you know what I'm saying? And uh, that's basically it. So what would I do? I'd mix my benzaldehyde and my aniline, or alanine. I would add two times as much. Now, if you had uh, N-methyl alanine, then, you know, you could just do two moles of benzaldehyde, one mole of alanine. But this is not as good of a reaction. So you got to add in twice as much um, alanine. So I would add in equal molar amounts of benzaldehyde and alanine, okay? Um, which, as you can see, instead of 2 to 1, you'd have a 2 to 2 ratio, which is a 1 to 1 ratio. So you have your two things mixed. The benzaldehyde will be the limiting reagent since you're, you know, adding in so much excess of the alanine. Um, I would set everything up for a reflux. But remember, do not reflux, because all that CO2 that you produce is going to cause foaming. You don't want it to overflow. You know, you don't want it to foam up or uh, overflow. Um, so heat it to approximately 150 C uh, until the CO2 stops being produced. And if it doesn't produce it at 150, maybe take it up to 155, 160. I would not take it up more than 160. Um, you know what I mean? If it's producing CO2 at 150, 155, as soon as it starts producing, you know, if you get to 150 and it produces CO2, that's good. You're good. Just keep going until it stops producing CO2. Keep the temp at 150. If not, you know, jack it up to 155. If it doesn't do it by 160, I don't know what to tell you. Um, because you're going to have some over foam, that's for sure, if you take it past there. Maybe 165. But I would definitely not take it past 165. Once you, it's just crazy. Um, and that's it. And everyone knows how. To, you know, I did a video on how to get amines. You know, extract amines and how to extract carboxylic acids. You know what I mean? You can easily extract it because with an amine, uh, when it's in the free base form, it's soluble more into uh, nonpolar product, nonpolar solvents. But if you acidify it so that it becomes a, a salt, an ammonium chloride salt, then it's soluble in water, polar stuff. You know what I mean? So that's how you can you can transfer it from one medium to the other and leave the contamination behind. You know what I mean? Um, but basically, that's you know how how it's done. I know people want to hear about you know this kind of thing. Um, you know, so I don't mind talking about it. Um, but actually doing it's another thing. It is illegal or whatever. Um, and that is basically the whole video. Seems I'll have a great day and I always remember science is great.